Okay, everybody. Uh, this is Chuck with Prepping Outfitters again. As promised, this is an inverter tutorial. Uh, this is a uh, Sun 600 watt grid tie inverter. Uh, what that means is, again, it has to have power from the grid to turn on. It will not work without power. So that's your safety feature to keep it from feeding power into the grid when the grid goes down. Uh, even though that's the case, if you know the grid is down, unplug them, uh, just to be safe. But it's got what's called islanding protection, and it's designed to uh, stop working. So, uh, let's get into this just a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do today is a little tutorial on upgrading the fan. Now these things work really well, but they're designed to work best at about half capacity. And the reason for that is this the fan in it is just simply too small. Uh, you can go upwards of 450 on the wattage with a good fan and still be okay. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go much past that though truthfully uh, you know obviously it's gonna cost you uh, this unit's gonna cost you uh, a couple hundred bucks it's it's not too bad uh, they do have a thousand watt and uh, inverter but that's for a 24 volt system and so you would need something a little beefier in in uh, solar panels to run that. The Harbor Freight panels would do it, but you'd need more of them. And it might be better to get one or two regular panels, run them in uh, series for 24 volts. Yes, series for 24 volts. So let's get into this a little bit. Let me move this out of the way. We're going to, oh, first and foremost, let's, I hope this is going to, um, focus let me try this let me try this and there is the information on the panel I hope that's good enough I can't see it because it's a little higher than I am I'm sitting in a chair okay uh, now first thing I want to say is some of you will do what I did. I had a bonehead move. I took the little black, if you can see it right there. I took the black nut off, set it down, knocked it off of where I set it and lost it. I still haven't found it. This is, for future reference, a 7 millimeter 1.0 thread nut. Fits right on like it's made for it. So go to a uh, nut and bolt place that's, that sells nuts and bolts specifically, like Fastenal, and get yourself a nut and a washer. You're good to go after that. Okay, now, if you can see in here, see that little fan right there? Here's a little fan right there. That little fan is a decent little fan if you're not pumping a lot of power in it. But you want to pump power through this. You want to make as much power as you can. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is unplug that little plug right there that goes to the fan. Where is your... There's... Oh, horse crap. There it is. Goes to the fan. And we're going to take that fan out. We're going to replace it with a normal, everyday, 12 volt, where are you? There you are, 12 volt fan from a computer. This is a DC brushless fan, uh, 12 volts, and it is a, what's that say? 0 0.051 amps. Now, you can tell that this has, where are you at here? You can tell it has more than two wires. The only two wires you need are red and black. That's all you need. 
this unit here. Put it back in here so you at least see what we're talking about. Uh, this unit here, once plugged in in that location right there, automatically turns the fan on and off on a thermal thermal protection device. So if it gets too hot, the fan kicks on. And it evacuates the heat and shuts itself back off again. Now there are times in the day when mine comes on and stays on. Um, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, but if you take this fan out here, there's another hole in the other end. It'll pull air through it and it will get rid of the heat. Now you don't want to put this on top because obviously you've got a control board on there. You can't put it on the side because it's thin to get rid of the to dissipate the heat. So what we're going to do, if you can see, it fits like this. The top goes on like that. I'm going to turn this fan so that it faces the correct direction, which I believe is this way, and orient the plug towards my plug, cut holes in it in the bottom plate, and mount it right there. That's how I do my modification. Very simple, with the exception of this. I would solder this, but uh, I, I bought some heat shrink tape at the hardware store and a, you know, word to the wise, check your bag before you leave because the lady put something else in the bag and cut a hole in it and apparently I lost my heat shrink. So we're going to use electrical tape. Not my most favorite thing, but it's going to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this now and I'll get to cutting my holes and mounting my fan. I'll show you that when I'm done and we'll go from there.